Hi dear students, I'm Dr. Denzi Lawrence and today I will be talking to you about biostatistics. Now let's get familiar with certain common statistical terms. First and foremost, what is a variable? Now a variable is a characteristic that takes on different values in different persons, places and things. That means to say anything can be a variable. For example, the amount of salivary proteins or the amount of fluoride in the saliva or it can be the amount of secretions from a certain gland. So anything can be considered to be a variable. Now when you see a variable, it is bound to take different values in different persons in different places. Constant on the other hand is something which does not vary. For example, the value of pi or the value, these are things which are given in mathematical empirical tissues. So these do not require any kind of statistical study, but variables which are most commonly used in biomedical research from blood pressure to salivary flow, to the rate of flow per minute, everything is a variable. So in biostatistics, the mean, the standard deviation, standard error, correlation coefficient, and proportion of a particular population are all considered to be constant. Observation, however, is an event and its measurement. For example, the blood pressure and its measurement. So these are the basic terminologies. Next is, what is an observational unit? The sources that gives observation, for example, the object or the person. In medical terms, we can use terms like individuals, subjects, which are most used often. Data is nothing but a set of values which are recorded for one or more observational units. So when data is collected in research, the findings are written down because they follow one or more observational units. When we talk about population, we are referring to the group of people or the study elements. The persons, the things or the measurements for which we have an interest at a certain point of time. Next is a sampling unit. Now, What is a sampling unit? It's a member of a population and a sample is nothing but a subset or a part of the population which we study. Next is a parameter. Now when we talk about parameter, it's a summary value or a constant of a variable which describes the sample such as its mean, standard deviation, standard error, correlation coefficient, etc. And parametric tests are the ones in which population constants such as described above are used. For example, the mean and the variances, etc. Now data tends to follow one assumed or an established distribution. Okay, So you all know that the distribution can either be normal, can it be binomial, can be poisons and etc. Non-parametric tests, however, are the ones like chi-square test in which no constant population is used. So data does not follow any kind of specific distribution and no assumptions. So these are made in parametric tests, non-parametric like good, better and best. Now according to the American Heritage Dictionary, it defines statistics as the mathematics of the collection, organization and interpretation of numerical data. Especially the analysis of the population characteristics by inference from a sampling population. The Webster's defines it as a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation and presentation of masses of numerical data. A simple but a very concise definition was given by Croxton and Cowden which says statistics is defined as a collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. So we need to understand that whatever data we get is actually collected, it is presented. So significant amount of statistics involves your data presentation. Next comes your analysis and finally comes your interpretation. So this sort of fills in the bubble which completely explains the whole concept of biomedical research. Now, like I mentioned, the statistics, the comprehensive definition was given by Croxton and Cowden. Now, what is a statistic or a datum? Anything which can be measured, which can be counted, it's a piece of information is a statistic. For example, the birth weight of a baby. Statistics or data is the plural of the same, whereas the height of two people, the birth weight of five babies or the plaque score of three persons. So biostatistics is the term and those of statistics that apply to the data, which is derived from the biological sciences like medicine. Next, moving on to the types of data. Now data can be either predominantly classified into qualitative data or quantitative data. Now qualitative data and quantitative data differ in the fact that anything which can be added up for example, the height, the weight is all quantitative data. Anything, for example, the quality of life or the behavioral practices or the oral hygiene behaviors or the knowledge or the perceptions, all of these fall under the qualitative data. Now, qualitative data is divided into nominal and ordinal and quantitative data is divided into discrete and continuous. So the two types among both of them are enumerated here. In continuous data, it can either follow an interval scale or a ratio scale. 
Now collection of data can be done from the primary resources where data is obtained by the investigator himself. Now this is your first hand information. Secondary resources are the ones which is already recorded like say for example record of the OPD from dental clinics. So that utilization is done to serve the purpose of your study is your secondary data. So the various methods of data collection in medical statistics are one by means of experiments, second is either by conducting surveys and third is by collecting the records. Now experiments and surveys are usually applied to generate data which are required for specific purposes. While records provide you ready-made data for quoting and continuous information, the examinations and the experiments and surveys generate the new data. Now method of direct observation. First and foremost, the clinical signs and symptoms of the prognosis and of the diagnosis is collected by direct observation. Now this normally happens to us on a daily basis. When we examine a patient, we collect the information on the oral health status. We start everything from your social demographic details to the oral hygiene practices and then it is going on to the intraoral and the extraoral examinations. So a lot of direct observation is done in the collection of data. Second, method of house to house visit. Vital statistics and morbidity statistics are usually collected by visiting from the door to door surveys. Third most important method is by mailing the questionnaires. So this method is followed in community where the literacy of the people is very high. So or give a postage stamp is attached to the questionnaire and the filled questionnaires are sent back to the investigators. Now coming to the presentation of data. Now presentation of data is important because we have to sort it out and classify the data into groups or classifications which will be meaningful for further analysis. The objective is to make the data simple, concise, meaningful, interesting and help in the further analysis of the data. Now either you can tabulate the data or you can do it in the form of charts and diagrams. Now tabulation of the data. Now devices for presenting data simply from masses of statistical data. You can draw a table which can be simple or complex depending upon the number of measurements. Either you can have a master table or you can have a simple table and then you can have a frequency distribution table. Now the master table contains all the data which is obtained from the survey or the procedure. Simple data is a one-way table which supply answers only to the questions about one characteristic only. And frequency distribution where data is first split up into convenient groups and the number of items which occur in each group is shown in adjacent columns. So the data representation starts with a simple method and going on to becoming a master table. For example, here we have a table depicting the states, name of the states and the population. So here there is segregation based upon the states for Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, UP, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Kerala and the population which is mentioned here. So this is a simple example of how data can be represented and also can be interpreted. Next is a frequency distribution. Now following are the figures with the ages of the patients who are admitted with polio. So following all the details of the ages are given. Now this entire chunk of data appears to be really confusing for the people. So here is an example of how the data is categorized in terms of the age and the number of patients. So the age is divided into various groups from 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24. And the number of patients according to the frequency are categorized as 35 patients, 18, 11, 8 and 6. So this is an example of how frequency wise you can distribute the data. Next, when it comes to the charts and the diagrams, the quantitative data can be depicted separately from the qualitative data. The quantitative data either can be depicted in the term of a histogram, a frequency polygon, a frequency curve, a line chart or a graph, a cumulative frequency diagram or a scatter diagram. When it comes to the qualitative data, you can either depict it in the form of a bar diagram, a pie chart or a pie sector diagram, a pictogram and a finally a map diagram. Now here is an example of histogram. In histogram, we create basically intervals and then you find out that 40, 60, 80, 100 and the corresponding number of cases which are mentioned. In terms of frequency, polygon versus histogram, you understand that the center point of all the values are joined to form a line which continuously flows. So it talks about the frequency versus the values across in the x-axis. Now frequency polygon is the cases of the disease x, y and z by the month of 2012 where we are using three different lines and three different color coding. So this is a simple example of a frequency polygon. Next is a frequency curve. Now frequency curve is a continuous curve which undergoes the entire trend. So it finds out and gives you the representation of the data in terms of the frequencies of the distribution. Next we have a line chart. A line chart or a graph which commonly people would have seen in the newspapers and the journals, it talks about a trend in a disease. So you start from a certain point A and then based upon 
multiple areas you are able to find out the distribution so all of this is basically a line chart or a line graph which is actually showing you the data distribution next is a cumulative frequency table and cumulative frequency table we have the values on the x and the y axis where you have a difference from various parts so we understand which is called an a uh, cumulative frequency diagram or an archive diagram which shows you the cumulative which is together put together the frequency distribution for a data element next we have a scatter plot diagram where we actually draw in all the lines and the dots are formed because we want to find out the distribution and a line passing through the max number of dots gives you the linear or the vertical relationship bar diagrams are commonly used as you can see here various items are put against various frequencies and various colors are given and coded either they can be a distinction between one alongside the other or one within the other so there are various types of bar diagrams which are used for the representation of data in the biomedical research now pi diagram as we commonly know is the chunk of one particular pi so we try to find out the various components in this case we can find out what are the preference for the social media websites according to used by the target population Pictogram is usually a representative of a particular unit. For example, here we want to find out about the infant mortality rate. So the picture is used of a baby, and that each individual unit is represented in terms of 50. So when you see from 1960s to 2002, we find out that every unit here represents about 50 infant deaths. So for thousand, so we can see there's a gradual decrease in the infant mortality, and this kind of a image is called a pictogram or a picture diagram. Next, we see the map diagram, which all of you are familiar with, which is usually using different shaded areas for different colors and represents with a certain degree or difference or the frequency of the distribution. So here, the color purple shows less than thirty percent of the districts affected. Orange shows thirty to fifty percent of the districts affected. Green is almost fifty to hundred percent of the districts affected, and blue or more is diseases not detected at all. So based on this, in a single diagram, we are able to convert your tabular data into some kind of an imagery in this process.